Rarely do we ever see or hear from the victims of domestic abuse, but one woman, assaulted and racially discriminated repeatedly at the hands of her partner one year ago, has agreed to share her story, to reach out to others trapped in the silence as she once was. Her name is Vanessa, she is 23, and is still haunted by the memories of what she once endured. I used to make food for him every day. I used to make all types of meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Some days he was appreciative, but some days he wasn't. It was the bad days that I had to look out for. Every day was a challenge, a different obstacle she had to overcome. Some days I think to myself, what am I doing wrong? It was like the simplest things would set him off. It was either the plate was too hot or the cutlery was on the wrong side. It was like he had aggressive OCD. He would even lock the door behind him. He would take my phone. He would take all the keys. I had no communication with outside. I went to see my stepsister while Jack was fast asleep. She had convinced me that it was time to leave him and get out of there before it was too late. I decided to tell him the truth. I needed to tell him everything. I just wanted him to stop. In the end, it was her stepsister who had convinced her to get him out of there before it was too late. The violence that followed was extreme. I went around the house that evening and I just told her what was going on. Jack answered the door, but he didn't let me in. I snuck around the back of the house and I saw her legs lying there unconscious. She wasn't moving. I've never been so scared in my life. Three months later, I woke up in hospital. I had just come out of a coma. I found out that he had broken my ribs, fractured my skull and broken my nose. Nearly 1.5 million high school students nationwide experience physical abuse from a dating partner in a single year. 60% of women had left because they feared that they or their children would be killed. There have nearly been 12.9 million incidents in the UK alone. Vanessa's story offers a real glimpse of what the victims have to go through on a daily basis. No one should live in fear. Seven months later, we met up with the victim to see how she was getting on after the suffering she endured. I am so happy that I'm not in a position that I was in before. If it wasn't for going to the refuge and them helping me once I got out of my coma, I wouldn't be here today. I was in the refuge for seven months. They helped me through everything. I attended meetings and counselling sessions. Talking about my problems was how I got through. Being in the refuge was really hard, especially since I was a black Caribbean woman in a predominantly white area. The questions that I was asked by the investigators were really hard and disgusting. They would refer to my skin colour and put me in a really uncomfortable situation. The hardest bit for me was not being able to forget what I went through. When I had woken up from the coma, I had found out that I was pregnant and I lost the baby. He was convicted and is now serving time for what he had done to me. Hopefully they knocked some sense into him, just like he knocked me. I am really happy with my life and being able to focus on myself, thanks to the charity Step Up. No one deserves to be treated the way I was. No one should live in fear. Finally helping the charity Step Up was a major help to Vanessa. Vanessa experienced something that many women face every day. The charity offered counselling sessions in order for her to help find closure and be able to build up the courage to feel safe in this world again. Vanessa finds comfort in this charity as it targets the younger generation as well as young adults. She feels no judgement and absolute trust and has been able to get through the difficulties with the help of Step Up. We met up with the founder of Step Up, Shelley Dooley, to ask her a few questions on different kinds of abuse in and around a relationship and how she has helped certain individuals. She mainly targets sexual abuse for children, but also helps others in the younger generation who have been domestically abused too. Why did you set up the charity? Um, 
I set up the charity because my daughter had been sexually abused. Then I realised that there had to be other people who, who were going through what I'd been going through. Setting up the charity was really a way to help them, but actually I also helped myself along the way. When did you first launch the charity Step Up? Charity was launched on the 21st of January 2003. What does your charity do or aim to achieve? The charity aims to help and support children and families where there's been sexual abuse or rape. And we do this by means of offering emotional support by telephone, support to parents, outings to children, counselling. What do you and other workers and volunteers do to achieve the best outcomes of the victims? Um, what do we do? I think the, the thing we do the most is we try and empower them so that they can heal themselves. What do you think is the main cause of abuse? Um, often it's not about sexual gratification, it's usually about power and control. So it's usually about the abuser trying to take control over someone who is vulnerable. Do you have any advice for people who are suffering in silence and are afraid to get help? Talk about it. Find someone that you trust, even if it's anonymous, phone a helpline. Even if you don't give any details of yourself, start to talk about it because even if you're telling someone anonymously on the end of the telephone, you're taking the first steps. If you have been affected by what has been shown, please call the helpline below. No one should live in fear. 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 No one should live in fear.